All right, everybody, everybody, man. Oh, I got a smooth dude on the channel today. And my man got a backdrop. Let me tell you how serious he is. And you're going to be shocked. They got some cool people in Omaha, Nebraska, and he's one of them. As a matter of fact, he's probably the king of the cool people. <laughs> in that black history. Hey, no, I, I, I say people. That's why I say that. Yeah, as, as they say in Hamilton, I'm just in the room where it happens. So. There you go. You see what I'm saying? He, he, he that smooth. Everybody, I'm Anthony Brogdon. I'm some smooth, I guess. I try to be smooth because I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm trying to enlighten you on this history. And I let the people tell it. I'm so excited. There's some good things happening at Strong Inspirations. Um, check it out. I'm having a toy drive in Kansas City, Kansas, which is going to lead up to my Freedom Quindero Festival. The toy drive, if you anywhere near Kansas City, Kansas, at the Quindero Underground Railroad Museum, you know where it is, in the Vernon Multipurpose Center, you know where it is. Come meet me December 4th and bring a toy so we can give it to some good kids that hang out at the Boys and Girls Club in that town. I'm having a festival in that town, May 27th through the 29th. Oh my God, I'm going to rock you. We're going to party in a barn Friday night, and then we're going to take tours of the city where them slaves escaped to from Missouri on Saturday. And they got a lot of Black history in that town. Watch out, my folks. You want to come and feel this vibe. And then we're going to have a black picnic, a picnic with black folks, where we're going to eat some of their food and we're going to listen to some of their music. We're going to do some of their dances on that Saturday. And we're going to stay late enough that we can see them stars and we can hear them voices. Maybe some of it is to hear that I had to get away and to hear the fear of what could happen if they got caught again. But we're going to center in on the good that they survived. And, uh, and, that's, and then Sunday, we're going to have a church service and a, and a brunch. And we're going to say prayer that you have made it safely and you get home safely. It's going to be well organized. You want to come to this. And the price is minimal. Uh, on the next few days, I'm sending out my literature. All this will be on my website, businessintheblack.net. I'm telling you, my friends, I'm jamming. This thing is rolling. The train has left the station. It has gone international. If you don't know, I got people on the channel from Australia, South Africa, London, Nova Scotia, Ireland, and more to come. And throughout America, just as I got my guest on the channel, from where he's from, he's going to tell you this story because there's some good history coming out of that town. Watch it. Uh, what I want you to do, my friends, is hit the subscribe button. It's free. It don't cost no information. I'm, my subscribers is growing every day. I want to grow exponentially to get to 5,000 before the end of the year. We got two months to do it. Watch out. I believe it can happen. Because all you got to do is hit the button. Boom. Shaka laka. Like this video because I'm telling you my man is ready. He been telling me he ready. I know he ready. Other people say he ready and he got the backdrop behind him to show you how ready he is. Boom. Like this video. Hit the notifications bell because I'm putting four or five videos up a week and you want to get notified so that you can watch him. All right. And tell somebody about strong inspirations. Don't keep it to yourself, my friend. You don't want to be the only one to know all this information. No, don't do that. That ain't good. Share it with your kids. Sit back, watch it on your smart TV and have you a little bowl of popcorn or something like that. And watch these people talk. And all I do is ask a couple intelligent questions. I, and sometimes they say, well, that's a good question. So I figure it's an intelligent question. 
do that for me, my friends. And then the other things I want you to do is watch my movie. I put two years in this. I'm a filmmaker and I got more to come. Watch me. Um, this one is called Business in the Black, The Rise of Black Business in America, Slaves Who Went to College. If you didn't know that, there were some who did. And they went to some Harvards and Yales. They went to some Overlands. And there were three HBCUs open before slavery ended. We talk about that in the movie and more. It's good. And it's streaming on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, put business in the black. You might have to put my name, Anthony Brogdon. And you get right there, hit click. Boom, shakalaka, you watching my movie. And you can see me in my nice suit. And then... I wrote a book on this because people kept telling me, hey, man, I like that film. So I put it in book form so you can do nothing but just go right to your shelf on your table. I got a lady that keeps the book in her purse because she be shocking people where she is. Just her words, not mine. It's more like the movie, but more thorough, more facts. I'm telling you all the way slaves got their freedom. And some of them sued for it. They told that man, I heard something that and I took it to court. Let me go. It's in my book, my friends. It's 204 facts. The book is so good. I'm so confident. If you read my book and you don't learn nothing new because you think you know all this, you do know all this, I give your money back. And every 10th book I sell, I donate one to school. It's, it's, this is bigger than me. You get your copy and I'll autograph it and maybe one day that might mean a lot. Go to the website, businessintheblack.net. Do it today, my friends. And now you hear me use this term strong a lot. Strong is everything I do. I try to do it in a strong manner. And so uh, it stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. And that's the introduction to my guest today. Oh my God, he's a strong man. Watch out, here we come on Strong Information. Brother, introduce yourself, let's get it on. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, Anthony, thank you for having me here today. And uh, my name is uh, Eric Ewing. I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm the executive director at the uh, Great Plains Black History Museum. As Anthony was mentioning, all the events and things gonna be happening down in Kansas. You know, as some people would say, hey, we're just a stone's throw away from there. So if you're in the area uh, checking out his events, make sure you come on up to Omaha to see what we have up here and see what's going on. All right. We stop by the Great Plains Black History Museum. I love it. I got to ask a couple questions on you. You know I do, my brother, because how did you get there, man? How did your family get to that town? Well, um, my my dad's parents, uh, um, they, they moved up from uh, Missouri from uh, St. Joe, Missouri. And they moved uh, here, I believe in the, uh, about in, in the 1950s or 19, late 1940s actually. Okay. And, uh, and my mom's uh, family moved up here around the same time as well. Now, was there some, uh, what was the attraction though? I mean, were they, well, you know, you what had, was the uh, industry great, or whatever? Great migration, you know, uh, th that occurred, uh, Back in 1919, you had a lot of folks moving up from the south uh, to this area, the meat packing industry. Oh, really? The meat packing industry was for Omaha, was like uh, car manufacturing was for Detroit. Yes. It brought a lot of folks to the area. And at one time, it, it made Omaha uh, the largest African American population west of the Mississippi outside of Los Angeles. Oh. So a lot of folks came up here because of uh, better job opportunities and uh, to help improve their living conditions. Now, when you say meat packing, what do you mean by that? What is that? Well, uh, where you you take cows and 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 pigs, you take them to slaughter to cut them down to the meat to, that goes to the grocery stores. Okay. That, uh, for folks to eat. I got you. Did 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 any of your family do that? Uh, I believe uh, some some of my family members did it. My dad didn't. Uh, he uh, actually been in construction pretty much uh, all of his life outside okay. of the little time he uh, he he also spent in the uh, in the military. He was in the uh, okay. Air Force. Do, 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 do you go back to hear of uh, any of the slavery in your family? 
No, I, 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 I haven't really delved much into that, that part, you know, uh, I know some of the history, but, uh, I try to even avoid using the term slavery. Yeah, and I, I know, I know, I see it too, slavery, I know. You know, yeah. because it wasn't a voluntary thing. Yeah, right. You know, it wasn't that we, we were doing this by choice. Yeah. And, you know, it was a situation in which uh, we had to endure, overcome, and, and yes. to allow us to to have the accomplishments that we've been able to have. Yeah, oh, I love it. I, 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 I totally agree with that. And uh, as I, you know, uh, and I, I like the word enslavement. That's really what it was. Um, now, uh, going to Great Plains, where where is Omaha? What does Omaha look like? What 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 kind of town is Omaha, Nebraska, and that kind of thing? Well, Omaha is uh, it's a big little town. You know, it, it's a it's a city that wants to be big, but wants to hold on to the small, you know, uh, homes hometown type type vibe. Okay. So, uh, you know, it, it's land-wise, it's a pretty, pretty big city. Oh, really? But uh, okay. population-wise, it's, it's not as big as some of your uh, cities. Some people compare it to like a, a smaller Detroit or a smaller Chicago. Oh, okay. I got you. Now, is there, uh, is there uh, a, 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 how, how many Black people live in, in the town, would you say? What's the percentage? Uh, the percentage would probably make up about maybe 14 15 percent okay and and so um is there a particular side of the town that is the, the, the where the black people live is there yeah, a name you for have that? an area known as uh the, the north omaha or, or some people refer to it as uh near near north or, or uh east but it's, okay. uh, it's for the most part most people know know it by north omaha is that is that is it near downtown? Because a lot of cities, the black neighborhood is is really downtown. Yeah, it's it's just north of a uh, north of downtown. Okay, and, and and is is there water in 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 Omaha or in Nebraska? Or is it very landlocked? Uh... Well, we've got we've got the um, uh, Missouri River just uh, right that we border on. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yes. And, and so y'all have a riverfront. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, over the years, has there been uh, some 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 issues, some black white issues, uh, civil rights type stuff that have happened in your town? It wouldn't be in America if there wasn't. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, uh, you know, there's been uh, you know diff riots relating, you know, to you know to race and and things along that line. Uh, we've had also had quite a few, you know. Uh, famous folks who have come through this through the city of Omaha you know we've had Dr. King uh visit visit the city of Omaha a oh, couple really? of times back in 1958 then again in 1961 even way back we had Frederick Douglass Frederick Douglass visited the city of Omaha in the late in the in 18 in the late 1870s then again in 1893-94 time frame and of course the home of Malcolm X Malcolm X was born here May 19th of 1925. Oh, oh, oh really? Malcolm X was born in Oklahoma. Oh, Omaha. Omaha, yes. Now, when, when Dr. King came through, was there uh was he helping to protest for something? Well, he was speaking at a couple of speaking engagements, uh, probably about five blocks just north uh north of where the museum is. He he had dinner at uh one of the women who whose home I uh my my dad grew up with her. Her name is Miss Pat Brown, and uh, he had dinner at her, her grandparents' home because they they you know were from the south and uh, uh, Reverend Abernathy wanted them to get a uh, good southern home. He have him have a good southern home style meal while he was here in Omaha. Uh, was what have there been some activists? some real noted act, you know, black activists over the years that were fighting for rights there or that settled there for some reason? Well, we've had a, a pretty active, uh, one of our uh, state senators, uh, Ernie Chambers, he's been fighting a good fight for, for, for quite a while, up until last year when his last, he was uh, finally hit the term limit of the term limits. Uh, okay. They, matter of fact, prior to him coming, uh, he, I believe he first uh, served on the uh, on 
as a state senator starting in the 70s. And he was uh, reelected so many times that they they established a term limit. Oh, you know, I got you. To to uh, you. to have him term out. Yeah. Now now, uh, do y'all have like a similar story? Uh, I got a guy on the channel out of Boise, Idaho, and Boise said, "Man, it was a good time for black people. I mean, we had a few issues, but we, you know, that the 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 the, 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 the governmental structure didn't have the same." Um, I don't know the term uh, put down of black people that you might expect it was. Is that is that similar to your town or? They call it here Omaha nice, I Nebraska nice, Nebraska nice. I got you. And, and you know, in 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 some of your your southern states, of course, you you know where not to go. Here. It, it doesn't say where not to go, and but but you really shouldn't go there. That's another side of town, let's say. Yeah. Well, and yeah, they uh, yeah, if certain areas of the city, you know, uh, there was a time where you know if you were in that area, they folks did, knew that you probably shouldn't be in that area. Is there a name for that town? That part of town? Uh, would be probably West Omaha, uh, Northwest Omaha. Matter of fact, they it, it was to, to identify uh, the area. When you got past a certain area, like uh, it was 72nd Street. Oh, I got you. Uh, you go to the west side of 72nd Street, you were in West Omaha. So it became West Omaha like Dodge, instead of just Dodge Street, it was West Dodge. If you I crossed over you. to the other side, it was Dodge. So then that way it identified that what part of the city you were in. So but, you do, know, have I've they always had shared, uh, any stories of KKKs or any of that kind of uh, back in the day, well, do you know? In, in, the, in the 1920s, we had roughly about 45,000 clan members that called Nebraska home. So uh, there were there were uh, a significant amount. Oh, no one was lynched. Uh, we we here in the city of Omaha we had two lynchings. Oh, uh, the one lynching occurred in uh, 1891, and that was the lynching of uh, Joe uh, George uh, George Smith, also known as Joe Cole. And then had a lynching in 1919. Of course, 1919, that was the time that was considered Red Summer. Yeah. You had the lynching of Will Brown. Will Brown was lynched uh, on September 28th of 1919. And, and George, in those two cases, uh, George, uh, what's, the, what's the backstory? Uh, the backstory for George, he was accused of raping a young white girl. Yeah, it's always a white woman, ain't it? Her, her succumbing to... to to the rape and dying, only for her to surface alive and well after uh, after his uh, his murder. Will Brown was accused of raping a healthy young white female while holding a perfectly healthy young white male off at gunpoint and running away. And two things he couldn't have done: he couldn't have held the gun because he was stricken with arthritis, and he couldn't have ran away because he walked with a prominent limp. Oh my and God. The young lady he allegedly raped admitted to the fact after his murder that he didn't rape her. Oh my God! Are there are, are there uh, some historical markers at the sites or anything like that? Yeah, we uh, the museum, along with a few other organizations, uh, we worked with a organization out of Montgomery, Alabama, called the Equal Justice Initiative. And yeah. what they've done is going throughout America to document what they refer to as the terroristic lynchings of African Americans. Right. And they believe where the blood was spilt in those in those murders, that it still resides in the soil. So they work with with communities to do a soil collection that they that they take back to their facility, and then they the organizations they work with ha, keeps a, a soil sample because they believe the blood. Where still resides in the soil. So uh, back in uh, 2019, we held a uh, reconciliation uh, event to bring awareness to uh, Will Brown's lynching, because that was the 100th anniversary of that. 
And then uh, last year we held one uh, for uh, George Smith, aka Joe Cole. And then June of June twenty eighth of this year, we we uh, a marker was put outside of the Douglas County Courthouse where uh, Will Brown's lynching occurred. So his, his lynching occurred outside the courthouse. Yes, they pulled him out of the courthouse. Uh, uh, they shot him, burnt him, and drug him throughout the street. And well, uh, 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 was anybody ever convicted or brought to trial or any of that? You, I, I, you, you, you know the probably the, the answer to, to that. The answer to that is no. Hmm. Uh, is there? Uh, let me ask you this: When, what's the take if you if something like that happens and you have a historical marker? Does that 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 preserves that moment? But does that uh, what does that do? Does white people look at that? You think and say, ha ha ha. I hope not. Uh, I, I think it, it it serves as a a educational tool to bring awareness to to those type of atrocities and you. to hopefully encourage us not to have those type of things occur again. I got you. And to understand that you know if if anything like that is does occur, you know that people will be held accountable. I got you. I love it. Okay, I, th this is the same kind of take on that question. When people like, and specifically in Southern towns, when they uh, have plantations and now these plantations are tourist sites, is that a, again, I wonder, is that a ha-ha moment? This is what happened. This is how great we were. Did, look at our, look at the, 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 the beauty of this home. Or, well, or, or is there something that, and, and, and you might be as, as, as running the museum, you, you want to showcase it, but do you, you also want to tell that story too, right? Well, you, you, you know, you want to tell the story, but you don't want to pimp our misery. I got you. I got you. You know, right. uh, you want to educate people of those things that have occurred, but don't do it for the intentions of necessarily profiting from that. I imagine there may be some people that may look at that and, and laugh and yeah. think of, boy, those were the good times. Right. But uh, I, I hope that there's more people that understand the the wrong that that uh, that occurred. I got you. I love it. You know? so, so how do you as a you yourself spend all your day in black history running this museum? How, how do you how do you get past, you know, how some people say, man, I'm just tired of hearing them stories. But you, every you, day you that's what you do in some respects. You you know what? Yeah, it's it's one of those things I've uh when I have visitors who may not be African Americans and they come into the museum, I share with them that first and foremost, what we're gonna learn about is American history. I love it. Told through the lens of African Americans. And you know, the one thing that you can do that I can't do is when you walk out that door, you can leave this here and not, not think about it at all. But it goes with me out, not just in, in, in the walls of the museum, but it goes with me in my day-to-day -day life. So uh, it can be, uh, be draining to tell those stories because sometimes in educating people, we don't realize that we we can also be traumatizing ourselves. Yeah, right. Because when you repeatedly talk about ugly things and 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 those things, it 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 wears on the soul. So you know, for me myself personally, you know, I meditate, you know, two or three times a a, a day, you know, and I exercise. I love it. One thing is is that uh, we we think to seek help is a sign of weakness. But you know, if 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 things are weighing heavy on you and there's resources to lighten your load and you don't don't utilize those, then you know you're not putting yourself in a situation to where you can live a better life and where you I can feel it. happy with living. And so like I said, I, I meditate three to four times a day. 
I love and it. And I exercise, and you know, I I take the the blackness goes with me twenty four seven. I love it. But the history component, I try to when I, when I'm done for the day, I try to I try to leave it here. For I them. love it. I love. But it. I'm still cognitive of of, the, of of my blackness and I having to be aware of my surroundings and and just ensuring that that I keep myself safe. I love it. I love it. Do you do you um uh I got a question here. Do you um what what what's what's in the museum? What kind of exhibits do you have there? Well, we we have uh two permanent exhibits and the other uh are, you know, every 2 to 3 months we have a new exhibit. Matter of fact, next week we'll have our uh Tuskegee Airmen who called Nebraska home exhibit and then African-Americans who serve. And that exhibit, folks, so here in, in, in Nebraska, we had 17 Tuskegee Airmen that called Nebraska home. And so uh, we, fo we focus on them as well as uh, other African-Americans who served in the military. You know, I, there's a saying, you know, that the military goes unrecognized and I tend to agree. But then I also point out the fact that the military as a whole goes unrecognized people of color who served in the military or are serving in the military go even more unrecognized. I got you. So with that exhibit, it's to bring awareness of the Tuskegee Airmen and then just awareness of, of the service in which we provided, you know, to, to make uh, America great. Because I share with folks, we have participated in every war that, that America's ever, be, ever been in. Right. You know, the first person to die for America's independence was of African descent. That's right. That's right. You know, and, right. uh, you know, and, but with us serving, we've served for a couple of reasons. We've served to serve, number one, our, our, our country, and, and then number two, for acceptance. You know, we, we go off That's to right. war knowing that okay we prove ourselves on the battlefield we come back home and we'll be accepted that's as right first class citizens as others that's right and only to not be admitted that's into right the club that's right you know and so uh it's just a way in which uh to bring awareness to our service and what we you know what we've provided i have two permanent exhibits as i said uh one is called hate the other is called hope and mm. when you know when a person sees those, they're they're easy to understand why one is called hate and one is called hope because of the the artifacts and the content uh, that that those two exhibits uh, are associated with. We we have an exhibit that uh, we have on display off and on called Twenty Fourth and Glory. That exhibit now imagine a twenty by thirty block radius, because that was basically about the area in which the black community was redlined to live in. But in that area, you've had, you have Bob Gibson, professional baseball player, yes. Hall of Famer, He's pitcher from for the St. Louis Cardinals, two-time MVP of the World Series. You have Gail Sayers, professional football player, played for the Chicago Bears, youngest player to ever be inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. You have uh, Bob Boozer, professional basketball player, Olympic gold medal winner, he was part of the Milwaukee Bucks 50, 50, uh, championship team 50 years ago. Okay. You, you have uh, Marlon Briscoe, the first African-American to start at quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I remember that name. Yeah. Now, he mm -hmm. actually, I'm cheating a little bit when I include him in that 20 by 30 block radius because he actually lived in what was known as, what is known as South Omaha. Yeah. He spent a lot of time in North Omaha. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah, you have Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner. I remember that name. And then Bud Terrence Crawford, currently the pound for pound best boxer in the world. Now, uh, when you, when you have uh, that that dynamic, um, and it's let's say, and and I guess fifteen percent, you know, maybe less back in the day, so few. Wait, did, was did that was that segregation back in the day too, where you couldn't go to certain stores? Do y'all talk about some of that? that there were there were some areas that you know that 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 had those type of uh, Jim Crow type uh, yeah you know rules and whatnot. But uh, what it was where we were redlined to live in a certain area, and so you live in that area, 
you did business in that area. So there was pretty much. Uh, okay, so then I don't say there was no need, but uh, folks just didn't didn't have didn't go to those other places because yeah, I got you. So you all I, I understandably when you talk about there, there's a main street that had all of the black businesses on that street, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. The, what is known as the 24th Street Corridor. Okay. That had uh, all the various uh, African American businesses and uh, was part of the jazz scene. Oh, okay. You know, uh, we had a pretty heavy jazz scene. Uh, I joke, joke with people that come up from Kansas City. You know, the Jazz Museum is down in Kansas City, uh, Missouri. Right. But uh, I point out the fact that we actually had more jazz artists play here in the city of Omaha than they did down in Kansas City. Oh, really? And that was because the way the railroad was constructed, if you were traveling north, south, east, or west, you were going to have a layover here in Omaha. And if you were in the entertainment business, you're going to be anywhere overnight. You're looking for a place to entertain and get paid. So a lot of those artists would play in this area. We had... Uh, Count Basie, Dizzy Gillespie, oh, really? uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole. Matter of fact, the song that made Nat King Cole famous, he wrote it right here in Omaha. Oh, really? It's song called Straighten Up and Fly Right. Oh, what was, what was the name of the uh, of the uh, the other term that they played in that they were able to play? Uh, well, they played in what was uh, known as the Dreamland Ballroom. Uh, Dreamland Ballroom is the building we're in is the Jewel Building. The Dreamland was on the uh, on the second floor of this building. They also played at the Carnation Ballroom. Uh, they played at uh, Allen Showcase. I got a little cheat sheet over here. I'm, I'm, yeah. uh, you had uh, McGill's Blues Room. You had uh, the Offbeat Club. Yeah, Carnation. You had Club Harlem. Oh, so there's you quite a few of them, understandably, yeah. Yeah, Eminem Lounge. You had the uh, Aloha Club. But the but the big one and the main one was the Dreamland. Okay, uh, let me. I don't know if this is right, and you, you you address some of it. But being that being that far away from the South, let's say, does that isolate you from uh, the the Southern uh, dynamics of let's say back in the day, the civil rights and stuff like that? The you, you know what I mean? Is there? Well, you know what? Uh, I, as 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 we migrated, so did some others from the south. I got you. So with their migration, they brought their views with them. I got you. And, and so, is, is there is there a known to be a a share for something like that? Was like a Bull Connor in Birmingham, that that really was the the, the one who instituted and instigated all those issues. No, not to my knowledge. I mean, uh, okay. there were, uh, you know, you you had law enforcement, you had some African-American law enforcement. Matter of fact, one of my staff members, her, uh, I believe it was her grandfather, was one of the first, uh, one was with that group of first African-American police officers, uh, yeah. you know, in the area. I know another gentleman who was, uh, Richard Artisan, he was a, a police officer for a while here in Omaha. Then he became a Secret Service agent. I got and you. And then he became the second African American to be the sheriff of uh, Milwaukee. Oh, really? But, okay. Uh, but yeah, there was no, uh, you know, there were issues, but it wasn't as, again, it was in the South, you knew where not to go. Right. Here, it wasn't so much of where you knew not to go. Uh, it was just. Uh, I got you. It was a I, different, different type thing. You know, you, you've I heard of you. the term sundown town. Yeah. You know, and we, we talk about sundown towns and we talk about the history of sundown town. And for those who are, don't know what a sundown town was, uh, sundown towns were t uh, area, cities that had uh, rules requiring blacks you know at well negroes or whatever and dogs to be off the street or out of the town by the time the sun went down right well you know interesting thing is there were more sundown towns in your northern states than there were in your southern states right okay so you know just because uh just because you were in the north 
doesn't mean that uh, there weren't those issues. Yeah, that that's true. Hurt. That's true. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, the, the, uh, we kind of come to a close. Let's say, do the Buffalo soldiers come through there? Is that is that a part of your dynamic? The Buffalo soldiers, the 9th and 10th Cavalry, they were stationed out in western Nebraska at Fort Robertson. And so uh, that's on the the other, we're basically on the east end of Nebraska and R Fort Robinson was on the west end of Nebraska. Okay. Uh, what about Seminole Indians? Are they in that, in particular, the black Seminole Indians? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Is there, um, is there, um, what, 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 do y'all celebrate Juneteenth as the Emancipation Day or some other we, yeah, day. Yeah, we we have we have Juneteenth uh, events and things that are, that are uh, occur. So yeah, yeah, we do. We have a parade and uh, and oh, just really? different different things that go on. Our our local NAACP chapter uh, pretty much uh, hosts or coordinates the uh, that event. Uh, uh, one more, two more questions. But is there uh, some particular holiday that Blacks celebrate in Nebraska for some reason? <laughs> no, uh, outside of Juneteenth, uh, you know. Other than Juneteenth, your okay. Your standard holidays, you know. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, there, there is a a holiday that was created out of Nebraska, but I don't think many Blacks celebrate it as Arbor Day. Okay. <laughs> that. That originated out of out of the state of Nebraska. Okay, now how do people? Um, uh, let, well, before I ask that question, is there a question that I have not asked you? Something that you know more about the museum, or have you written a book or anything like that? What's what's up next for you all? That kind of yeah. thing. Well, I haven't written a book, but we do have a book that captures uh, some of the artifacts and things that have been donated to the museum. Uh, it's called in their own image, and uh, we we also we had a, a black homesteading uh, here in 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 Nebraska. It was in uh, it was called uh, Dewitty in Cherry County. That's in the Sand Hill uh, part of uh, part of Nebraska. Now, what does that mean? That, uh, what does that mean? Uh, black black homesteading. Yeah. What does that mean? That, yeah. That was uh, during uh, when as folks are migrating out uh, west and north, uh, the government formed uh, homesteading acts. Okay. And uh, where you could get so many acres of land and you had to build a home and you oh, had really? to farm the area for uh, a period of time. When you mentioned Kansas City, Kansas, I was going to uh, thinking of Nicodemus. That was also a black homesteading area. Uh, in Kansas. And so oh. um, those type of areas were some of the earlier settlements where you had a larger population of, uh, of African Americans that, uh, that lived in, lived together and worked together. Is, is, that, is that still operating today? Is that? No, unfortunately not. Okay. But we do have an exhibit that we put up uh, every couple of years. We uh, get the exhibit from the, uh, from the descendants of DeWitty. And those are people whose families were part of that homesteading. And it was called uh, DeWitt? Yeah, DeWitty. Okay, DeWitty. Uh, yeah. How do people find out more about the museum? What's the website? How do they come? We're going to support this cause, man. Yeah. Well, to, uh, you can go to the website at GP Black History Museum.org. Okay. And uh, on there, you can learn more about the museum, and also uh, right now we're open, but we're we try to be open by appointments. Yeah. So then that way you come in, we can take you on a tour, and we can kind of explain to you what you're seeing. Yeah. And the history behind it, and you give just give a person a better understanding. Yeah. Uh, so we're open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from one to five, as I mentioned by appointment. Yes. And uh. We have various events going on throughout the year and various exhibits. We're hoping to, uh, in the in the future, uh, get a new facility built so we can be a better, a bigger and better resource for oh, really? uh, tourism okay. to to the city and to the state. Okay. 
I love it. Well, wait a minute, one more question. Who founded the museum? Are you the founder? No, the founder was Mrs. Bertha Calloway. She started the museum back in 1976. Okay. And uh, she ran the museum until the uh, 1990s and then she grew ill and the museum was kind of in influx for a period of time. And uh, I want to say probably about 12 years ago, uh, a new board was formed and uh, the museum temporarily served as a traveling exhibits, providing traveling exhibits. Then we had a temporary location. Okay. And then we've been in the uh, Jewel building for the last uh, four and a half years. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, hey, Thank everybody, you. this is what we do at Strong Inspirations. I tell you, I, I've i never thought of Omaha, Nebraska, or Black people, uh, I, it, 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 and so on and so forth. And doom, there it is. They holding it down in that town and got a museum that is thriving in that town and the people are going to see it and they holding them festivals and everything else. So if you nearby and I wanna come see it myself, uh, then check out the museum and support that cause. Support this brother. It, it, are you surprised that this is how you, that you turned out to be a, a historian and, and a museum operator? Was this always kind of your personal dream? Oh, no, no, it, it, uh, it was the furthest thing from my mind. You know, uh, my education is, uh, you know, I've got a few degrees, uh, associate's degree in general studies, an undergraduate degree in workforce education, a master's in management, a few postgraduate certificates, one in life coaching, one in yeah. college teaching. And then I'm a dissertation away from a doctorate degree in, in, in education. Oh, heavy. Retired, retired military. And so... Uh, this was, if you had told me that as that I'd be doing this as a kid, I would would have laughed at you. And then if you had said a historian, I would have asked you, what's that? Oh, I got you. And now you an expert. Uh, <laughs> well, now no, you real I, good I'm at it. I'm a work in progress. I'm a you work in real progress. Good at, and he's a paper away from that dissertation doctorate. Oh my God. Everybody, I'm telling you, I don't know how I find these people. I found him. A man said, hey, I want to come on. And here we are. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Everybody hit the subscribe button on the channel because you see what I'm doing. I know you're going to like and got to hit the like button on this video. I know you got to hit the like button. because he, he, he knocked it out the box. There's no question. Great, great. This, is, this is what he do every day. And also, you can, follow us on, huh? you can follow us on Facebook uh, at Great Plains Black History yep. Museum. Yep. Do the Facebook, too. Everybody, this is what we do. I'm so excited that you have come on and we have been able to hear some more of your history, American history, with a, from the Black perspective. How about that, my friends? Oh, yes. So uh, with that, I say, my brother, with all sincerity, I want you to stay strong, stay safe, stay on your grind, keep doing what you're doing, get that paper knocked out. Go on and you know, you you go on and finish that. That'll be a huge accomplishment oh, yeah. on your resume. And uh keep that that, that museum. The, the, the banner looks good. I like the color combination, the background. I know the building is solid. All y'all people out there in Omar Bar, go down there and support them and what they're doing. And so uh, with that, I'll say bye-bye, we out. Oh, hey, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate your time. appreciate you having me. Thank you very All much. All right, stay safe, too. All right. All right, bye-bye.